We bought it for 920000 right? This was off market. It was a two bedroom, one bathroom house within a, with a detached garage, a two car detached garage. Extended the, the front unit. Uh, and then the two car garage was, I believe, about 350 square feet. We added another 320 square feet to it. So we made that a 700 square foot property. Our strategy was we're going to build an ADU, but we're also going to force a value of the front unit by making it a four bedroom, three bathroom. So by way of ADU, we converted the garage into an ADU. Um, so we bought that for 920, uh, spent about 320,000 on it, some, somewhere around that range. Our all in is at 1.3 really on this property, 1.37 ish around there. Um, I got it appraised and I, I got two lenders to appraise this thing on a cash out refi at 2 million, above 2 million. What's going on, guys? Today we are here with Alvin Uy, who is an investor, flipper, ADU developer, entrepreneur based out of the LA area. And man, we just finished up recording with him. And he's one of those people that you kind of just like hear his whole life story. And you wonder, what the hell have I been doing with my life? Because he <laughs> has done yeah. everything, you know, like, so, so much. We covered an incredible amount in this episode and it really just scratched the surface of stuff that he has done. So you should definitely go and, you know, look at more of his long form interviews if you're interested in them. Um, but he's done everything from he started a uh, product business that he went on Shark Tank and turned down a million dollar offer from one of the sharks and went and scaled that into a much larger business. He had a digital marketing and like design company where he was doing very high profile you know, designs and artwork for movies, including like all the Harry Potter DVD covers, like they did all those sort of things. So you've probably seen a lot of his work and not even known it. And all along that same time, he was flipping houses. He had a real estate license. He started a mortgage company. And now he's gone full-time into real estate as of what, a couple of years ago and is doing, what do you say? Seven deals at a time with like yeah. Seven active projects. With these like million dollar purchases that he's adding, you know, seven figures of equity to these deals and he's keeping most of them. Like it's insane what Alvin's doing. He's doing it. The thing that's the thing I think of that's incredible with him is A, he's very humble. Like when he very, very, very much so just scratched the surface on the stuff he's doing. Mike and I know him personally and I know he does so much um, and has a lot of challenge in his, challenges in his life he's overcome. But he's doing it in Southern California is the point I want to bring up, which everybody's like, I can't invest in Southern California. He's burring in Southern California. California. He's flipping. He's doing new construction and new development. He's doing it all in LA County, which is incredibly challenging, but he's figured out and is highly successful. Yeah, like it's, like you said, just leaves you going, cool. Everything that I've done is, yeah. is meaningless. And anybody that's done less than me, they have literally no excuse because yeah. he's, he like, it's also to all this stuff he just learned on his own. He had like, yeah. And you know, the best part about this is, is he did have a rich dad, but his dad was rich in the Philippines. Yeah. And when you hear his story, it is not what you think it is when I say Yeah, that. right. Fair, true. Yeah. Start, started literally yeah. sleeping on, on the floor with no bed in a one bed, one bath apartment. Yeah. It's a, his, his story is yeah. incredible. So anyways, guys, really, really good stuff here. I know you guys will enjoy it and seriously reach out to Alvin on Instagram and go and check out his other material that he's done. He has kind of a unique name. So if you Google him, he'll show up. He hasn't done a huge amount of media because he just started doing stuff this past year. Um, but, and if you can find it, like, there's just so many amazing tidbits that he drops in there and doesn't even realize how much gold there is. But anyways, guys, hope you enjoy the show. Um, it's a really, really solid one. And if you could leave us a five-star review everywhere, that really helps us out. Besides that, guys. But seriously, leave a five-star review. I mean, honestly, like, what are you waiting like, for? It takes please. two seconds. It's really simple. Do it. Um, I'm asking. <laughs> asking nicely. I'm not going to ask again. But <laughs> all right, guys, enjoy this show with Alvin Uwe. All right, we are here today with Alvin Uwe. And man, I'm so excited to have you on the show, dude. I have known you for quite a while through GoBundance and you were pushing off on doing media appearances for a little bit, but you have such an awesome story. You're doing so many great things in the real estate and business space. And uh, yeah, man, really excited to have you on. So people who haven't heard about you, maybe give us a breakdown, um, kind of who you are and what you do. And then we will go into your backstory a little bit from there. Okay. Well, I am Alvin Uli. I'm a real estate investor here in Southern California. I'm in Los Angeles. Uh, I've been investing for the past 20 years in SoCal. Uh, I didn't know better at the time, so I figured, <laughs> yeah, I'll just, I got to figure out how to 
operate it here. And, and I've always wanted to dive into real estate. And so that's something that I've been focusing on since I read the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Really? You know, yeah, there's another yeah, one. So just, just like everybody else. It's, yeah. You know, yeah. Um, but yeah, so I've been focusing on that. And now, you know, I've, I've had other businesses. I was a serial entrepreneur uh, in a past life, I guess. Now, after joining GoBundance, like, you know, I figured I, I didn't really just focus on one thing, maybe expand on that. Um, so yeah. I decided to 100% pivot to real estate as of 2021-ish. Yeah, it's and pretty recent to it. Yeah, well, when I joined GoBundance. Um, yeah, right. You know, that was a big... Uh, um, that was a big light bulb moment for me on my first event. You know, I, I need to really just focus. And so that's what I did. Now I'm here in Los Angeles tackling uh, opportunities with, you know, helping develop and, you know, helping out in terms of creating more housing, which is uh, a big need here. Mm -hmm. uh, I do a lot of ADUs, SB9, all that stuff. That's something that we specialize in now. And I, been, I'm in the process of building a uh, construction team and yeah. hopefully uh, putting a fund together at the end of the year. Nice. That's incredible. I love it. So yeah, so you started real estate in 2021. You're already doing all the stuff that people have been working for like five so, or 10 years. I guess years to clear that up, did you say you started investing 20 years ago or you started? 20 years ago. So I started investing yeah. actually uh, 2000 and 2003. Okay. Three, yeah. So that was, yeah, I got my first property 2003. The the incredible thing I find just about your story too, is that you said you, you you're investing in Southern California and I can't wait to dive into some of the stuff you talk about, like the SB nine stuff. I know you and I have talked about some of that stuff and like, that is where the ultimate creativity is and how you're able to invest down there and make really good money and good cash flow on properties, which is unheard of in Southern California. Yeah. I mean, everyone's like, you need to leave California because the politics, the high price point, all that sort of stuff. You might be the only guy that's able to do it. Well, I'll tell you right now, like, you know, California, in my opinion, it's a big boy state, you know, like mm -hmm. you got to really know what you're doing to operate here. Uh, it's not a one trick pony state, you know, uh, especially Los Angeles. It's very, very competitive. Uh, there's not one single strategy that, that would work 100% of the time. Uh, you know, real estate, as you guys know, is extremely dynamic, especially in this market cycle that we're in. You have to be thinking outside of the box to really make things work. Yeah. Um, I, I love how you say it's a big boy state. So you can take all the people that are saying, you know, don't go to California. It's because they suck. Let's be honest. You're just, <laughs> right. you're just a better yeah. operator than yeah. they are. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, you know, here, here's the thing, right? Like, and I don't know how free flow you guys want to have this podcast, but yeah. Uh, you know, I, you know, I, I've gone through like all the different cycles, maybe mm -hmm. once or twice now, um, 2008, when it crashed, you got all these gurus coming out of the woodwork. They got all these courses. They got all these ideas that may have worked the years before. And you're starting to see those signs again. And I'm like, okay, that mm -hmm. it's starting to, those signs are coming back and you mm -hmm. got all these gurus out of state that may not necessarily know how to operate here and their mm -hmm. systems do not work in California. It's such a unique uh, uh, state that, you know, it's, you know, uh, one trick just doesn't work. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, that's awesome. What, uh, what um, was the trick that got you started back? You said when you, when you started 20 years ago, like what was that? What was the first thing you got into? <coughs> All right. So, well, fun fact for me, um, I've never actually rented a property in my entire life. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I decided back then that, you know, in, in my early twenties, um, while my siblings were moving to, uh, apartments, things like that. I asked my parents, I go, mom, dad, we have a garage. Can I convert that into a bedroom and start saving some money? And they're like, sure. You know, and I had a W2 job at the time. Uh, I started giving them a little bit of, uh, my income to help cover the mortgage. And I learned, oh, you can depreciate. Oh, can you put me on title? <laughs> and can I write off some of that stuff so I can save more money? They're like, sure. So I'm like, you know, and I'm like, wow, this is incredible. Wow. Um, so I effectively built my first ADU back then without even knowing it, you know? Um, then 
2003, I had enough money to save my first for my first property. And, you know, at the time they were giving away loans, you know, I, you know, um, I got a 80, 10, 10 loan, yep. basically hundred percent financing. I knew I couldn't afford it at the time. And I ended up house hacking that, uh, accidentally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that's kind of how I started. And I, you know, I started realizing, wow, this is something that I should really look into. And that's about the time I read Rich Dad Poor Dad. So it, everything just kind of happened like all at the same time for me. Yeah. So that's, that kind of gave you a little foray. And what was your like background growing up? I believe your, did your family immigrate here? Yeah, I'm first generation. So uh, I came here when I was 12 years old. Um, my parents woke us up in the middle of the night um, from, you know, I was born in the Philippines. Um, Middle of the night, said, "Hey guys, um, we're going to Disneyland." <laughs> and so we're like, "You know, what do you do when you're 12? You just jump up and go." Like, "Okay, let's go. Let's do this." Yeah. Uh, we came here uh, when I was 12, and I am one of five kids. Um, I was the eldest of five kids. Uh, the youngest of us is, you know, she's 10 years younger than me, so she was only two at the time. Um, Parents were of wealth, I guess, in the Philippines. It's, it's either really poor or really rich over there. Um, and, you know, they left everything just to come here um, without the blessing of my grandparents. So they mm -hmm. were completely disowned. Uh, you know, that being said, you know, it's a new world for them, uh, you know, because they were of means. They had no sense of how to cook, how to clean, how to even find a job. Uh, you know, they had, you know, really, you know, big degrees. They made, my dad was, a, was an engineer. My mom was, I don't even know what she had, but she was, uh, you know, she was a CPA, I think, or she had an accounting degree. Uh, but, you know, all those things don't really count when, when you come to a different world, you know. Uh, yeah. You don't have a job history. They didn't have an address. You couldn't find work. Wow. Um, that being said, you know, they brought a lot of money with them, which they thought was a lot of money. But because mm -hmm. you have no uh, credit history, even you can't really buy anything outside of using cash. So, long story short, they spent all their money being here. Um, ended up living in a one-bedroom apartment with me and my siblings, sleeping on the floor, on the carpet. Literally, no, uh, we couldn't even afford to have a uh, a mattress, so we just slept mm -hmm. on the floor for maybe about a year, a year and a half because uh, my parents didn't know how to cook either. So, you know, it was, it was a struggle, you know, yeah. Yeah. it was a struggle. It, yeah. That, <coughs> yep. that, that is so interesting though, right? That they, you know, so they come from means in the Philippines and then to come here and have it just be not really like mean a lot. Right. So, One you know, second, then they kind of have to, a, oh, even a delay. Yeah. The, the audio is kind of cutting in and out. What was that, Mike? Oh, is it, is that better? Yeah, that's better now. Okay, cool. Yeah, I was, yeah. So I was say it's it's very interesting. You know, something that people don't always realize is you say you know you came from means in the Philippines, but you came here, and it kind of doesn't like mean a lot. Like they're able to obviously have somewhere secure in terms of like a one bedroom, one bath apartment. But what you're describing is like most people's like really rough coming up age story you know like when they're doing these podcasts and they're like an american born real estate guy right mm -hmm. but you, you know your family actually almost took a big step backwards to come here because i'm assuming because they saw like the larger opportunity in the united states um i guess what was their main motivation for coming over? um yeah there's many factors you know uh you know i don't know if we want to take too much time diving into this but uh the short end of it is this um there is you know they had they got their visas to come here uh, it was the second time around. Uh, the mm -hmm. first time was my dad's visa and that expired. My grandpa said, why would you leave all this money behind? You got all this. And my dad is the firstborn. Uh, he was supposed to take over the businesses out there, but he, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I guess there's one day where, um, I have an uncle who somehow got involved with politics and, you know, was in the limelight and, you know, maybe had some enemies or whatnot. But, you know, at the end of the day, we were starting the family started getting a lot of death threats, mm -hmm. ransom, kidnapping. And, you know, uh, my, my, 
my parents just kind of freaked out. Um, mm-hmm. I think I have a brother that almost got kidnapped. And so that same day they decided, mm-hmm. Hey, let's just go yeah. and not yeah. tell anybody. And that's why they woke us up in the middle of the night to just come here. Uh, that's, that's the main that's motivation, you know, and my yeah. grandma always said, why would you leave all this just to go to the U S and become janitors and maids? Mm-hmm. And, um, ironically enough, my, my dad's first job, he was a janitor and, mm-hmm. Uh, he was disowned and all that stuff. So he, he, you know, he brought the family here, my immediate family here to build his own legacy and, uh, kind of ran into walls. Yeah. yeah. And so right. in my, in, in, you know, what I do now is, you know, I'm, I'm in a mission to extend that family legacy and, you know, make sure that my parents, uh, sacrifices don't go to waste. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love it. That's, yeah. that's so interesting, right? Like just, you so hear that so rarely about people so willingly walking away, I guess, from like a position of power to come somewhere, you know, and, and start over like that mm-hmm. to pave their own way. Um, but I mean, it's very admirable of them to do that, right? Like, obviously it's worked out very well for you. And I would imagine, you know, for you and your families growing up in the Philippines probably has the opportunity to be a bit of a, sorry, growing up in the United States probably has the opportunity to be a bit of an easier life than in the Philippines. Um, totally pontificating. I have no idea, but right. yeah, I mean, you know, you know, it's, it's a land of opportunity and that's, that's a phrase that kind of always stuck out, you know, uh, mm-hmm. growing up, you know, and, you know, looking through that lens, even my, seeing my parents kind of go through it. I mean, you know, when they first came here, they thought it was, they thought it was a lot easier mm-hmm. than what it yeah. really was. And so, uh, I took it up as a challenge to just really look through everything through that lens, you know, and I just, you know created an optimistic approach to it. You know, Mm -hmm. I I saw a lot of people maybe aren't working hard enough to get where they want to be, but maybe it's because they're just looking at the wrong lens. And so Mm -hmm. that's how I've always kind of approached things. It's I'm looking for the opportunity. I'm looking for the positives, not the negatives, you know, Mm -hmm. gap in the gain stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. It's like looking at like how you can make it happen, not why, why it won't happen for you. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, no, that's awesome. So, you got your foray in real estate in 2003. Um, when did you start Scrubby Buddies and start going I down that this, yeah. endeavor? I think that was the name of your. Uh, no, it's your actually uh, Soap Socks. Soap, soap Socks. socks. So yeah. I know. Yeah. I know. It, it was some, some bath thing yeah. for for kids, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so, let me, I'll dive into a little bit of a backstory about that. So, uh, you know, after reading Rich Dad Poor Dad, uh, especially the cash flow quadrant, I wanted yeah. to, I basically plotted my way to like becoming a, a business owner and investor. That was my goal. So I had a W2 job and I decided, you know what, I, I'm going to go into design. Uh, by the way, I was uh, studying uh, engineering in college and I dropped out just because I couldn't see myself continuing that career. Um, and I decided to jump into art, which my parents just freaking freaked out, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know? Um, and I told them, look, you know, I, I can find a way to make money doing this and got into doing design, um, uh, you know, got a job somewhere where I knew I can learn that business um, and learn how to run that business, ended up a- opening my own agency at some point for, uh, and I ran that for about uh, I guess, 20 years in that industry. So doing a lot of branding, product development. I, you know, started with, you know, building uh, uh, artwork for movies and developing brands. And, you know, I started working for like, you know, some of my clients were like Mattel, Hasbro, Disney. So I knew how to, I knew how to basically create these things. And then I had a buddy from high school that said, hey, Alvin, you know, I just got laid off. I'm looking for a change. My wife doesn't want me to pursue the career of uh, um, law enforcement because we have a kid coming up, but I've got this idea and it's kind of like my one last shot. Can you help me with, with creating a logo for it? And at the time I looked at it and I'm like, you know what, man, this is a great concept. I'm looking for a project. This is right up my alley. I love the story. I, it, it really uh, aligns with what I'm looking for you know, the story behind it, the purpose behind it of helping kids that were of, um, uh, 
it was basically a product of uh, helping kids who are products of abuse, I guess. Mm -hmm. And so that resonated with me because of my backstory. Um, and, and so I said, you know what, let, let make me a partner. Let's bring this to fold and make it happen. So, um, uh, I started designing for it. I started creating the brand, developed it a little bit further, launching on Kickstarter in, in, in a week we raised $50,000. We're like, holy crap, this is real. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize at the time Kickstarter was international even. So, mm -hmm. um, I'm like, wow, this is global. You know, this isn't, you know, this can be a big thing and, uh, launched it at a convention, you know, just to get more feedback. And that first day we got, uh, an award for innovation. And that same day, we also got an order from Nordstrom, which we did not expect. And because we got that order from Nordstrom, you got scouts from Shark Tank floating around and said, Hey, you guys have an amazing product. Would you guys come to pitch on the show? And so we pitched on Shark Tank, make the long story short, we got uh, offers from two sets of sharks, uh, Damon John and um, uh, Laurie Grenier, Laurie Grenier and Robert Hershevec. Um, they wanted to buy us out, offered us a million bucks, uh, but it just that deal just didn't make sense for us. So we walked away from it. Ooh, that's tough. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. So, that was, it's, yeah. yeah, it's a, such a crazy experience because that was like your first sort of shot at doing any sort of development or being involved in a business like that. And I guess for people that aren't familiar, give us like the two second version of what exactly the product. <coughs> okay, was. so so the product is essentially this. Um, it's a it's a washcloth uh, disguised as a stuffed animal. Mm -hmm. um, so think of a stuffed animal with. Uh, Tear cloth outside. It's got antimicrobial sponge inside. Mm -hmm. um, we have different animals where you feed it certain ways. You can feed it soap, liquid mm -hmm. soap. You dunk it in water, and you know you basically, um, you know, it's it's like a loofah slash, you know, think of what you guys used to probably wash your cars with. It's similar mm -hmm. to that, you know. But kids would look at it and say, "Hey, that's that's a friend in the tub," and um, I can also carry it around. So it's in and out of the tub. It's your best friend, mm -hmm. you know, and you dunk it in water. You could probably even throw it. You can throw it in the laundry also. So you can easily wash it just like everything else. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's awesome. So, so you, you built that out and went on shark tank, you turned down the million bucks and like, where did things go from there? So, you know, we ended up just launching it ourselves and because we have relationships with like the Disney's and all the different. Uh, licenses. So I ended up doing our own thing. Um, uh, it is, it, it's all over uh, retails now. So we have, you know, it's in Target, I believe. Uh, we're in Macy's. I don't handle operations anymore because I'm, I kind of got out of that and I don't handle sales, but I know we're in Macy's. We're in several other major retailers. Uh, and, you know, at this point, I'm just an equity partner now. Mm, perfect. Um, yeah. That's, that's a good spot to be in. Yeah, right. Yeah. Absolutely. So no, that's cool. So I guess how like that probably, I don't know, I guess what was that time frame with that? Because you said you started getting into real estate full time in 2021 after going go abundant. So was that your main gig really up until that? Point? No, so I still have my design agency on top of that. So I, had, I ran a full service design agency, uh, did a lot of entertainment work, did video games, did, you know, uh, everything and everything, anything and everything, uh, entertainment. So uh, TV. I designed a lot of stuff for the movies. Uh, I don't know if you guys, you know, you, you're probably young enough to remember this. Um, Harry Potter, a lot mm -hmm. of theatrical stuff was my artwork. Uh, I designed the DVDs when they first came out, all of mm -hmm. those collections, those was all my work. Um, and, uh, a lot of toys, a lot of video games, electronic arts, video games. I mean, all those things we designed. Um, and, uh, so I had that agency, we had a, uh, video production company as well, uh, in house. So I was building, learn how to build all this integrated businesses within the business, mm. um, and kind of scaled that up and then come 2020 is when I kind of shut that down because COVID happened and lost more mm -hmm. than half of my clientele. And I, I, I was also pretty burnt out at that point looking for a change. Yeah. 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 It's so crazy. Just like how many different things you've been involved in that I feel like 
it's like people's bucket list to do like one of those things. Totally. And you've done like so many of them yeah. over the course of your life. That's amazing. Um, so you joined go abundance, started getting into real estate. Let's talk about that transition and kind of like how you started with that and the stuff that you're working on now. Cause I know you're doing a bunch of different things in that realm. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I, I've been doing real estate since 2003. So, yeah. Uh, so I, I guess full, you know, full time real estate though is a different mindset than when you're looking to park some money versus you're trying to like. Well, I wasn't. I was actually fairly active even in between. So I was buying real estate yeah. all in between, man. Like I got that, you know. Even when I had W two, man, I'm like buying properties. I was flipping. I was rehabbing, learning all those trades because I knew that was my end game. Um, seems like and you've so done, just talking to you too, I'd love to get into some of it. Like a lot of you, like taking on some pretty serious projects on the flipping, and and you've done some the hard challenging stuff. So I think that's really, I'd love to dive into kind of how you got into that and like what well, I mean, doing I'm, what you went full time. Yeah. I'm just, I, I, I'm very curious, you know, and I like to push my limits. You know, there's always challenges that come in front of you. And I, I, you know, made a promise to myself. Like I'm always going to be the better version of myself every day. I need to improve every challenge that come my way. I got to, you know, I have this thing called fighting my dragon or slaying my dragons. You know, mm. uh, I look at everything as an opportunity to grow. Every single challenge to me, I look at it as a, as a dragon. So how do I beat this dragon? I gamify it. And so that's how I get into a lot of stuff. And anytime I'm, I'm very curious, I'm very, you know, I, and I like to challenge myself. I like to, I'm a fighter. <laughs> so, yeah, so, yeah. you know, I figured I got to learn how to rehab because, you know, it's something that's it's something I can use eventually. So from 2003, I just started learning how to rehab, learning how to, you know, you know, I'd rather make those mistakes early on and be able to, uh, you know, uh, be able to identify the proper ways of doing things, be able to identify the proper general contractor to hire subcontractors. So I learned that trade fairly early on. And so by the time, you know, I, I, I pivoted, I had everything I needed, you know, mm -hmm. even between, I don't know if you guys told you, I don't know if I told you this before, I even started a mortgage company at one point, just so I can oh, learn wow. how to get loans and understand know, yeah. wholesaling and wholesale rates and all that stuff. Um, I also got a real estate license around two, 2005, I believe, uh, just so I can know the ins and outs of, 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 of the real estate documents, mm -hmm. you know, um, and you know, I, I just, I'm just curious. And for me, for me to be able to really understand something, I got to be in it, it for it yeah. to stick. Um, yeah. And so that's kind of my story with that. Wow. Yeah. Like, how do you even have, how'd you even have the time? <laughs> I just found time, dude. I just yeah, found I time, man. I just found like time. This, it's just the, like, that's, it's such a, I don't know, such a big thing that most people get stuck up on is like, they can't get started in real estate or, you know, doing anything outside of like their main day job because they don't have time, but you've done like everything under the sun. Like, so, <laughs> I mean, and it's also, if you didn't know how to do either, you just learned how to do it, or I'm assuming you found people that knew how to do it. And, I found, I mean, you know, I found resources. Look, I mean, like I said, I looked through everything as a land of opportunity, right? Yeah. There is, there is, there's a means to everything here. There's a problem. There's always a solution. Right. Yeah. And I looked at my dad, my dad was working graveyard shifts. So I'm like, man, if he can do it, he can find the time to do that and still, you know, kind of take care of us in the mornings and things like that. And I'm like, you know, if he can do it, I can do it. So it's really yeah. just learn that grit early on and seeing it through the lens of, of the hard work that my, my parents did. And I'm like, you know, mm -hmm. if I gotta, I gotta do the same. Yeah, absolutely. So then when you started going full time into real estate, I guess, what was your mission objective with that like what did you decide you're going to do first like were you flipping were you looking well, for wholesale and you said yeah you ADUs and stuff. yeah so so here's the long story short so by 2020 uh i wanted to just effectively i wanted to retire or i mm -hmm. i did retire i guess you can say and i got really bored you know and my nature is just like man i can't just sit around and be a passive investor right, right? And I'm a, I'm a product developer by heart, you know, at, at heart. So I, I wanted to build, I like to build stuff, you know, I'm, I'm, that's just me. That's in my DNA. It's just like create stuff. I'm a creator. So, uh, right around that time I discovered ADUs and development 
um, you know, I, I, I had an interest in that for a long time. It just never really had the bandwidth uh, uh, capacity wise or time wise. So that was my first realization of pivoting uh, while I was kind of in this retirement phase. Um, you know, I had a lot of time and, and initially I invested with a partner uh, for development of uh, ground up development, basically tearing down a property and starting new, uh, building two units in there or two to four units in there. Quickly realized I knew more than this person. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, right. so I'm like, man, so it just became this thing where I ended up taking over and I realized, okay, this is, this is it for me. This is, this is where I need to be. This is what, this is my, my, my drive and everything that I've done before with everything business wise, development wise, it's all coming into place, especially when my end game is always real estate. Anyway, that mm -hmm. time that I've been pushing out, then it's like, I'll do that. Then, uh, when it comes time, well, that one day is now. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. What did that, yeah. what does that process look like for you? Because, um, when it comes to actually <coughs> diving in it, cause there's the acquisition side, I would love to hear how you're, how you're finding these, these deals or these plays that you, and, and then how you're underwriting them. And then probably there's some specific stuff to Southern California where you've cracked the code a bit. So I'd love to kind of hear that a little bit end to end from start to finish. Oh, I can give you guys, uh, um, I, I just did a complete burr recently nice. okay. on, uh, using an ADU. Um, um, so I'll give you guys, uh, a little bit of our unique strategies that, that we've been developing yeah. for the past couple of years. So and when you say complete burr, you mean you pulled out all the money that you had invested in there. Right. Right. And right. this, but this is, dude, the rates are so high right now. That's literally impossible. So I don't believe you. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Liar. Look, he, he, here's the thing, right? So a lot of people, when they start talking about strategies for real estate, they have like one or two, right? Mm -hmm. And because I study all these different ways to maximize, optimize, and force value, force rents, force appreciation, you know, the key is really being able to, you know, take all these tools and put them all together. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, you got, you got deal sourcing, you get off market deals, you know, you can, you know, find stuff on MLS even. Right. So honestly, a lot of the stuff that we buy are still on MLS. Uh, but because I learned how to force value uh, by way of, of you know, ad additions and construction and just maximizing opportunity, uh, that's where the significance of these valuations come up. So I'll give you guys a quick breakdown. So about about a month, uh, a year ago, about a year ago, we bought a property. Um, we bought it for 920000 right? This was off market. It was a two bedroom, one bathroom house within a, with a detached garage, a two car detached garage, right? Um, and it was a wholesale deal. So we, we paid, uh, I, I believe another 220, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, $20,000 on it for the wholesale. Uh, so we're all in on the acquisition was, you know, 940 at that point. Um, so our strategy was, we're going to build an ADU, but we're also going to force a value of the front unit by making it a four bedroom, three bathroom. So we added 500 square feet to it, right? So it's from a two bedroom, one bathroom to a four un uh, four bedroom, three bathrooms. To add that square feet, did you actually extend the house or was yeah, it we a covered area? Yeah, we, we extended the, the front unit. Okay. Uh, and then the two car garage was, I believe about 350 square feet. We added another 320 square feet to it. So we made that a wow. 700 square foot property. I mean, uh, uh, structure as well. Mm -hmm. And there's also a bonus structure in the back of that garage, uh, that was considered a rompus room. You know, honestly, I didn't even know what a rompus room was, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I just looked at it. I'm like, Oh, it's a separate structure. It's permitted. It's got its own bathroom. I could turn that into a bedroom. You know, mm -hmm. uh, so by way of ADU, we converted the garage into an ADU. Um, so we bought that for 920, uh, spent about 320,000 on it. Some, somewhere around that range Wow. are all in us at 1.3 really on this property. 1.37 ish around there. Um, I got it appraised and I, I got two lenders to appraise this thing on a cash out refi at 
two million, above two million. Wow. Wow. Both of them was one was at two two million and forty, the other one was like two million and sixty or something like that. Um so even at seventy percent cash out refi, I got all my money out plus an extra fifty two thousand. There you go. Yeah. At seventy percent L T V, right? Wow. Seventy yeah. percent. That's awesome. That, yeah. that's and like seven hundred thousand dollars in equity. You, I mean, you know, someone that's could huge. become like a millionaire. You do like one of those. Yeah, you do that's one of these, and yeah. and because you know, I study all the different approaches for pushing rents. Mm-hmm. Uh, so mm-hmm. we're doing midterm rental, short term rental on these. Uh, it's in a really good area of town, so we know that we can potentially even do you know co living strategies on this, uh, you know, anything like that, and so. Uh, Cash on cash return is infinite. Yep. Um, I, I believe we're probably going to average about f- maybe five thousand dollars a month net on this, nice. on on a, uh, uh, um, a mid term short term rental strategy. How um, much did you say net? About five grand on oh, an average. Grand. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Nice. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's huge. So let me let me yeah. just understand this while you're talking about cash flow. So you you increased the main living area for to a four bed three bath. Was the garage mm. attached or detached? Is no, it's you, detached. So detached. that's a separate unit now that you you ex- it's you, a s- you you created completely and you separate a unit. Rompus yep. room, which so you basically with this house are able to have two ADUs. Is that how it works out? No, we technically speaking, the uh, the rompus room was something we didn't want to. Conv- it's part of the original house. You okay. know, it wasn't really considered, even though it's a separate structure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The living square footage in that counted towards the original house. And, mm-hmm. you know, at the time, uh, ADUs, you know, you run the risk valuation in these ADUs because appraisal standards haven't really caught up. Mm-hmm. So um, we don't want to consider that as part of the ADU. But you can rent it, it separately. Because it's a separate time. structure, we are renting it separately. Nice. So essentially, we have three units here right now that we're renting separately. Let me ask you this, just out of curiosity, how many, like what, what is the square footage of the lot on something like this? Cause I know Southern California, I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be small and you're able to have this. This is 6,000. I believe this one's okay. about 6,000. Yeah. Which Mike is, and I, yeah, Mike and I have a 6,000 square foot lot that we're only able to, to shove a house on in our market. But I bring that up because California usually leads the way in stuff like this and are ahead of the curve, especially in the affordable housing. Um, whether mm-hmm. you guys are doing it the right way, that's a that's a political question, right? But like, we're seeing that <coughs> pop up in our market. You and I had chatted about this last year, I think, or earlier this year about kind of your strategy because I'm trying to get ahead of the curve here in our market because mm-hmm. there is going to be a lot of opportunity across the country to do these as laws change, laws catch up. And then mm-hmm. as you said, Alvin, as the lending practices catch up with the appraisals, there's a ton of opportunity here. Yeah, and, and, and I want to touch on that a little bit. You know, ADUs to me is the new California gold, gold rush. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, not people, not too many people realize it yet, but man, it's a game changer. And it's constantly changing. There's a legislation that just passed the last couple of weeks, uh, AB 1033, which now allows these ADUs to be sold separately as condos. Oh, really? wow. Oh, this is a big deal because that means these things aren't going to be appraised a little differently if they're being sold separately. It might even open up lending opportunities. Yeah. And so I'm trying to get on in front of that curve, uh, you know, and I'm trying to build as much of these as possible, not to sell, but just I know the value is going to go up. Totally. Mm-hmm. The equity play, and, the equity play there when you could have an ADU that essentially you can turn into a condo that maybe sells for 500000 and there is, I, I, man, I'm already, my mind's going fast now. That's amazing. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, you know, California is perfect place to build these things because, you know, I can build these things anywhere from 200, 250 per square foot. Uh, cause I have my own construction team, That's uh, might be even less, you know, if it's a garage conversion, it's probably about a hundred per square foot or less. Um, yeah. but anything new build, you know, probably build it between 200 and about 250, um, ish, um, that's great. Price. But these things are trading on retail at the very least 500 per square foot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> in one on our latest project, that was at 900 per square foot. So you're doubling, tripling your value, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. so it makes, it makes, it makes total sense. sense. You got to do it. It makes yeah. sense. You know, so it's, it's, it's a gift. Right. Yeah. 
So can you That's give it. us a rundown just for our audience, just some of the laws that you're kind of the that you've cracked the code, I'll say, on that you're basically just becoming an expert. You said that earlier earlier today, like this is where your expertise lies. Like you've got the ADU laws and the the multifamily laws, all that stuff with SB nine and the, even the recent law that just you just mentioned. Can you kind of step through that? What that actually looks like for how you're able to drive so much value that you can actually just buy something off the MLS? I mean, honestly, it's it's pretty easy. You know, development is really the key here. You know, you 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 can capitalize on the the fact that you know your build costs will never be higher than the retail. Mm -hmm. So it totally makes sense on that, on that front. So that's really the key component there, you know, mm -hmm. and if you are able to find hidden bedrooms, the more bedrooms you have, obviously you can crank up the, the rent and you can effectively burr over here. Mm -hmm. burr so, in, yeah. Yeah. In California, let me understand this. So if you have a house, you can always have an ADU now, right? That's one of the rules. Oh, it, it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a, it's a right. It's a right. It's by right. Right by right. Yep. But if you have a lot big enough, you could have two houses and then thus two ADUs. Yes, that's the SB9. So SB9 is uh, a, a, a slightly separate variation of uh, this housing uh, um, zoning, uh, I, I guess, expansion. Um, so what you can do is you can add a second unit to it. And then by right, because you now have two units, you can add two ADUs to any multifamily. Mm -hmm. So we're actually even buying multifamily of four units. We're converting those into six units, adding two wow. ADUs off the bat. So um, ADUs are not limited to single family houses. You can add them to multifamily. In fact, we have two other projects that are like that. That's cool. Yeah. Yep. Th that's awesome. And all of a sudden I'm thinking about all these people that are going to these other markets, trying to find cheaper stuff. It's like just do it with nicer properties, like you said, where you can actually make the new build that does have upside, right? Like, why would I want to buy a bunch of properties from the 70s in, you know, like the Midwest or the Southeast or whatever, when I can have a brand new property that's also going to be just worth so much more over the yeah, long run? Yeah, and, and I've, I've, I've explored those markets as well. I have a couple apartments that I bought in Kansas City, Missouri, and I'm actually selling one of them now. Just because, yeah, right. just because I'm like, oh man, like I, I, you know, it's, I'm looking at it as an opportunity cost, <laughs> you, know? Right, right. you know, bought it last year, completely you have that, you know, it's a lot more headaches because there's more units, a lot more maintenance. And yeah. if I can better returns here, you know, I'll, I'll just do that because I have, I have a bigger team here and bigger control. Right. Absolutely. So what does your total portfolio look like now? Um, and like how many, how regularly are you doing these kinds of deals? Uh, gosh, you know what? We have about seven active projects right now. <laughs> that's crazy. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so, and that's a combination of, uh, ADUs and we're doing, we'll, we're flipping properties too, and we're building like hillside developments. Uh, so we're, you know, we're still, you know, we're not just one niche, you know, we're, we're expanding, yeah. but we specialize in the ADUs just because I believe in it. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, I flip properties too. But I, I like the heavy distress homes just because, you know, there's a lot more opportunities for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On that, yeah. why you have, I know you, I'm sure you have some of your own capital reserves, but for seven active projects in Southern California, those are large. What are you looking at from a lending standpoint on your, for the short term? And then obviously you're trying to do burrs on the ones you're keeping, but. Yeah. So lending strategies, man, I get this, I get this question a lot. Um, I've been, we've been self-financed this entire time because I own a lot of properties out here. Uh, I've been, I'm leveraging as much as I can. He logs, he loans, uh, plus we do flips too. So we use some of those profits to build other things. Sure. Plus we're able to burr so we can recycle the money as well. Right. Uh, but now as of this year, and I've always sort of held back from, uh, taking investor money. Uh, but you know, since go abundance, man, they're like, everybody's like, Hey, Alvin, how do we invest with you? How do we partner with you? And now that I'm like doing a lot more social media, I'm getting a lot of, uh, uh, I, I guess DMS on the, Hey, how do we invest with you? And mm -hmm. this year I started, uh, taking on money for gap funding basically. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's, that's kind of what we're doing now. So, uh, but I, I leverage hard money guys, mm -hmm. majority of the deals here. Yep. Um, California, for some reason, our rates are a lot lower than most states in hard money. 
and I get right. ninety I get ninety percent financing as That's well, awesome. and and also ninety percent on acquisition and also rehab and construction. Hmm. Um, so you know I'm I'm leveraging as much as I can. Yeah. That's interesting. So I guess what kind of rates when you say that they're lower than other places do you get in California? Yeah. Oh gosh, guys. Uh, my last deal, uh, I was at 9%. 9%? 90%. 90%. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, actually 8.75. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. really good. Yeah. 8.75, yes. 90%. And then, you know, cash at refinance was at 8.25 on a 30 year interest only loan for the first 10 years. Yeah. So we get, you know, the DSR loans, I'm sure you guys, are you guys familiar with those? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The DSCR and a cash out. So I, I like those interest only for, you know, loans. Um, yeah. Those are, those are my favorite. Yeah. yeah. That's so interesting. I wonder why lenders are want to give you rates like that, that are so much lower. Cause like most places you're not getting anything less than 11 or 12% right now. Uh, I mean, cause we're buying multi-million dollar properties, you know, it, they, yeah. it still makes sense yep. for them. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. and also, I mean, quite honestly, I, you know, I'm a, I'm an experienced operator. So mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I guess you can say I have more leverage and you know, I'm able to get them more compact, get, get them to be more competitive and mm -hmm. yeah. make some exceptions. Yeah. That's awesome, man. It's so, it's so just fascinating how many things that you've gone through. And I just love the fact that you've like just gone big on this stuff too. Like you've done in so many different ways, you've done things that people say are like kind of impossible or people kind of just talk about being like, Oh, you know, you shouldn't do this because like it's in California, like it's a higher price point. Like there's all this legislation around it. And you know, when everyone's looked left, you've gone, you know, gone right. right and just made it work and it's really succeeded with it too. It's super awesome. Yep. Um, so yeah, so I appreciate all the information here, Alvin, and you know, you, you have a ton more stuff you can talk about. We're going to be starting to wrap up the show here. Um, so if you guys want any more stuff from Alvin, definitely after the show, make sure that you give him a follow and go and look at some other material that he's been on. Cause he has a bunch of other long form interviews that are really, really great. Um, so we're going to wrap up here with our final end of show questions. Um, so first <coughs> off, which is always the, uh, the group favorite, what is, uh, what is your craziest real estate investing story? And this can be a big win. It can be a big loss. It can be just like a crazy tenant, crazy situation, whatever you got. You know, I, I'm going to talk about the, my first property just because it, it's coming full circle now. And at the time yeah. it didn't make sense for me. Um, you know, my, I, I think I kind of mentioned it earlier. So I bought a property at, almost at the height of the, I maybe at, at the going to the height of the market before it crashed in 2003, right? Which at the time it was really expensive for me. I thought I didn't, I didn't even know how I, I afforded that, but it was zero financing. Uh, mm -hmm. So I bought that for 323,000. It's a 9,000 square foot lot. Uh, I knew then, and it was in a fairly yeah, gentrifying neighborhood at the time, and, but it was what came up for me. And it's something that uh, at the time, like, okay, this is, this is all I can afford. I didn't really know what I was doing, to be honest. So I had a fairly, crappy uh realtor who was also the mortgage broker and he mm. was my mom's friend from church so i ended up oh i gotta <laughs> trust this person right <laughs> yeah but right. man i i think i got screwed on this thing without even really knowing it you know it yeah. was on title it was only one bedroom one bathroom but when i saw the house oh it's three bedroom two bathrooms i didn't know that like unpermitted space mattered oh. you know right. <laughs> you know so i bought that and you know i i got really high interest rates on it you know, because I trusted him. Right. And yeah, so, man. and that actually pushed me to get a license because I'm like, this is never going to happen again. I don't want to ever get screwed again. So yeah. that's why I wanted to learn about loans. I wanted to learn about how to, you know, these contracts, things like that. And also I ended up rehabbing it. Um, yeah. The reason why I bring this up is because now that one bedroom, one bathroom property, look at Zestimate, it's worth at least a million. Wow. Yeah. And because it's a 9,000 square foot lot, because of the SB9 rule, I can make this a four unit. So I'm actually in the process of doing SB9 on this, turning it down. Nice. And once I'm done with it, it's probably going to be worth around 2.6. Incredible. Huge yeah. number. So, so, yeah. so you still own it and you're going to make $2.3 million yep. on this one yep. deal after it's all done. Yep, pretty that's, much. That's, that's, that's wild. 
And, and I, so I guess when you, when you bought it, like you said, you trusted this person, what was your original intention? Was it to do the ADU thing or was it just I like had no intention, house? man? I just wanted to, I just wanted a property. <laughs> I just want yeah. to get in the game. You know, yeah, I'm right. like, they're giving away free loans. I'm like, Hey, why not? You know, I knew at the yeah. time I couldn't afford it, but it taught me mm -hmm. so much. That one property yeah. taught me everything. And it really catapulted me to where I am now. You know, I learned how to house hack in that thing, yep. you know, yeah. accidentally because I couldn't afford it. So it forced me to do a lot of adjustments. And so it's probably my biggest lesson that I've, I've, I've done. Wow. Yeah. I mean, you took action. That's like the, the number one thing. To, number one step to doing big things is taking action. Yep. But awesome. That's a great story. It That's is. super cool. Um, all right. So second question, what is the number one tip you would give to a small time investor looking to take their business to the next level? Uh, you mentioned it, take action. Um, take action. you know, that's the first thing that bottlenecks everybody and really just work on your mindset. You know, the biggest bottleneck when everybody is mindset, you know, mm -hmm. people, people usually get stuck with thinking what ifs, you know, mm -hmm. you just really concentrate on the first, most important first step, you know, start rolling that bowl a little bit and just once you get momentum, you know, and believe in yourself, you know, there's resources everywhere. Yeah. You know, this is, you know, you're not trailblazing here, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, there's resources every, everywhere. If I can do it, you can do it. Yeah, absolutely. Do you have any good resources that you like for mindset stuff? Uh, you know, I, I, I just read a lot of, books on that and I can't remember some of the titles off the bat but uh Jason Dries actually coached me a little bit mm -hmm. uh a little bit Jason Dries uh he, the do the impossible he's got a book um let's see honestly it's just really listening to a lot of podcasts you know I mm -hmm. I religiously listen to books and podcasts every day as part of my morning routine you know I I do my runs or my walks in the morning I just listen to a lot of stuff Mm -hmm. Love it. Soaking so it simple. Soaking it up. Gap in the game is yeah. another one. Gap in the game. Yeah, that's a good uh, one. That one. That, that's a good one. Yeah. Awesome. All right, Alvin. Last question. Where can people find you, follow you, and reach out to you if you like them to do so? Um, well, I'm all over the social media now. So I got, I'm on Facebook and Instagram under Alvinized, A L V I N I Z E D. So you can reach out to me there. Uh, I'm. I'm there. <laughs> I love the handle. Perfect. I love it. Alvinized. Yes. Yeah, Alvinized. Yeah, yeah that. that's a great one. Um, cool. Well, Alvin, man, thanks so much for coming on the show. I really, really appreciate you coming in. And, you know, we barely scratched the surface on a lot of stuff that you're working on. So, <laughs> you guys, if you had any interest in what Alvin said here, and if, I don't know, somebody talking about how they're taking a deal they got ripped off on and they're going to make two and a half million dollars off of it, if that doesn't interest you, then go listen to something else because this show is not for you. <laughs> like, that is the definition of like a sick deal that's right, there. right there. Um, you should go in, give Alvin a follow at his Alvinized Instagram account. Go ahead and shoot him a DM and maybe see if you can invest with him as well. I'm sure that uh, he would love to bring you into some of his deals that he's working on. Besides that, guys, share this with everyone who might find this interesting and uh, leave us a five-star review if you don't mind. It's a great way to help us get to the show. But thanks for listening, everybody, and we'll talk to you all next week. Peace.